Today is a five-year rebuild challenge for the Los Angeles Chargers. So usually rebuilds are for really bad teams, like I did the Jets a few videos ago, but this one will be a little bit different because this team is already pretty good. Obviously, the key point to this franchise is quarterback Justin Herbert. Right now, he's in his second year on this. He has a superstar depth rate, 85 overall, and we are using a 2022 roster, so I do have new rookie guard that they took in the first round, Zion Johnson. But obviously, the rest of the team, you have a young superstar running back in Austin Eckler. You have Keenan Allen, who is an X-Factor and 93 overall and Mike Williams, who is an 86 overall superstar, and you have Rashawn Slater, who has a hidden depth trait, 81 overall, and a rookie, obviously. On the defensive side of the ball, you have three X-Factors, Derwin James, Joey Bosa, and Khalil Mack now, and they added JC Jackson. This team is very, very talented, and it's not a usual rebuild because my goal is to not win a Super Bowl, it is to win multiple Super Bowls. But with that all being said, let's go ahead and jump to mid-season of season one. At the midseason mark, we are two and four. I honestly thought this team would be a little bit better than that. We are the 27th ranked offense right now and the 14th ranked defense. Herbert at the midway point has 1,700 yards, 11 touchdowns to two interceptions. Rushing wise, Austin Eckler, 52 carries for four touchdowns. And receiving, Keenan Allen has 35 catches for 487 yards and four touchdowns. And Gerald Everett has 31 catches for three touchdowns. Mike Williams not really getting involved that much. Leading the team in tackles is strong safety, Derwin James with 41. How about sacks? That will obviously be Khalil Mack with five. And interceptions, JC Jackson with one. Before we jump to the end of the season, I did re-sign wide receiver Mike Williams to a four-year contract, so we will have him this entire rebuild. But from here, I will jump to the end of the season. We will see if we can turn this thing around or if we are going to have a high draft pick here in season one. All right, so we managed to turn the season around a bit and finish 10 and seven and sneak into the playoffs. It looks like the Chiefs won the division and we get in as a six seed. We finished the season with the eighth ranked offense in the league and the 20th ranked defense, even though the defense is a higher overall on our team at an 88. But now let's see if we can win our first playoff game of the series, taking on the Deshaun Watson-led Cleveland Browns. And it looks like our first season will end in the wildcard round 28-14. Final season stats, Herbert ends with almost 5,000 yards, 32 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. Rushing Austin Eckler ends with 858 yards and 13 touchdowns. Isaiah Spiller ends with 6 touchdowns, the rookie running back. Keenan Allen ends with 1,200 yards and 7 touchdowns. Gerald Everett, 96 catches, 1,000 yards, and 10 touchdowns. That's not bad. I don't believe he is that highly rated. He is only an 80 overall, but he does have a star dev trade. Leading the team in tackles was Drew Tranquil with 111. Looks like the former Oklahoma Sooner Kenneth Murray got 95. In sacks, Khalil Mack got 10 and a half. And in interceptions, Tranquil got two. JC Jackson got two. And then Asante Samuel. Gilman and Michael Davis all got one. Mahomes ends the season with almost 5,500 yards, 43 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Rodgers leads the league in touchdown passes with 44. What about interceptions? That goes to Jared Goff with 23. On the ground, Jonathan Taylor ends with 1,800 yards and 18 touchdowns. But Nick Chubb takes the lead for rushing touchdowns with 23. Only one receiver caught over 100 balls this year. That is Michael Thomas with 107 for 1,500 yards, but only two touchdowns. And leading the league in touchdowns was Brandon Cooks with 14. Jermaine Pratt for Cincinnati leads the league in tackles with 146. What about sacks? That goes to Rashawn Gary with 20. And interceptions, Marlon Humphrey got seven. And it looks like the Super Bowl here in the first season of this rebuild experiment is the Chiefs against the Cowboys. And the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl 35-24. Aaron Rodgers wins NFL MVP. Arthur Smith is coach of the year. Aaron Rodgers also wins Offensive Player of the Year. Chase Young wins Defensive Player of the Year. Zach Wilson and George Karloftis take home Rookie of the Year. Obviously, Zach Wilson's not a rookie. But that's just the sort of stuff you have to deal with when you use updated rosters like this. Now I'm at the re-signing period. Isaiah Spiller's contract was up for some reason. I think whoever made the roster just may have forgot to like edit his contract, but it's whatever. He now has a four-year contract. Jalen Guyton denied my contract. He's going to test for agency. We may try to bring him back or see what else is available. And then everyone else is going to get to hit free agency. So we have a few big names retiring. Calais Campbell has retired. Richie Incognito has retired. AJ Green has retired. Jason Peters. Jason Kelsey and Brandon Graham. 
And here are the five contracts I am offering in the first days of free agency. I'm trying to bring back Jalen Guyton, Doug Costin to play the other side of Joseph Day, Morgan Moses to be a starting right tackle as of right now, and then Connor McGovern and Phil Haynes to be backup guards. Here in the next stage, Connor McGovern and Phil Haynes are still waiting to get maybe a better contract offer. I did kind of lowball them, but they are still here. We are still the only bid on them. We did sign Doug Costin and Morgan Moses, but we did not manage to bring back Jalen Guyton. Jalen Guyton has decided to sign with Pittsburgh, so we will need a new slot receiver this year. The only new contract I've offered here is Jamal Agnew, wide receiver, who is a scheme fit at 72 overall. He is 27 years old, but he has 93 speed. He may not even be our main slot receiver. He's just one of the best guys left. It looks like Jamal Agnew is now waiting to see if he gets a better contract offer, but we did manage to land Connor McGovern and Phil Haynes, so now we have our backup guards. Well, I knew this was a risk with it happening. Jamal Agnew has decided not to sign with anybody. He will most likely be available in the regular free agents list after the draft. Looking around the league though, Gronk is headed to Arizona. JC Treader is headed to the Rams. Odell Beckham is headed back to Cleveland. Who else we got here? Cole Beasley is an Eagle. Kinda don't want that to happen. Dante Hightower is a Lion. Adrian Phillips is a Bear. And that's really all the big names. And we are now here at the first draft of this video. If you don't know how I draft in franchise rebuilds like this, I draft the first three rounds and then I let the CPU draft the remaining picks that I have just because it kind of shortens the video and at that point I'm just kind of drafting on a crapshoot anyway. Well, let's see who the Giants go with. Pick number one in the draft, they take Lloyd Turner, defensive end out of Ohio State. What do the Lions do? They take Will Hartwell, a wide receiver out of UCLA. We'll look at the top five picks and then we'll simulate to ours. The Bengals draft a quarterback, Derek Murphy. I've never seen Derek spelled that way, but Derek Murphy, quarterback out of Penn State, will now probably back up Joe Burrow after being the third overall pick. And the fourth overall pick will be left tackle Elliott Johnson to the Panthers. And the Titans with the fifth pick take defensive tackle Victor Charles. I don't believe this is a big need for us. I would say tackle is a bigger need, but there's not a tackle here at pick 21 that I'm really comfortable with. So I'm looking at tight end Johnny Davis out of Georgia. We know he has a catch in traffic, a deep route. He runs a 4.56, which is the fastest tight end this year. And what else does he have? A break tackle, C run block finesse, and B trucking. Yeah, we're going to take tight end Johnny Davis out of Georgia. He has a normal dev trade. I was kind of hoping for a hidden dev trade, but we'll see how good he is after the draft. And now I'm at pick 21 here in the second round. And I think after looking at all of our options available, I think the best thing is going to be to trade with the Vikings and pick up a two and a three for next season. There was just no one I was really interested in getting there at the end of the second round. There were a couple players that looked nice, but nothing that looked like worth a second round pick. So looking around here at pick 21, and I've been looking for a minute and I'm not really seeing anyone that just like jumps out at me that I absolutely need. There's a couple okay players, but no one that I really think is going to help the team and the tackles and the guards left are not very good at all. So I think I'm also going to trade this pick for a 2023 round three pick and a round seven this year. Let's take a look at the draft class, starting with Johnny Davis, the only player that I personally selected tight end out of Georgia is 73 overall with a normal dev trade. Past that, we have a 62 overall quarterback that they took in the fourth round, a 66 overall defensive tackle in the fifth, a 69 overall receiver in the sixth round is not bad, a 70 overall middle linebacker in the seventh round with Washington's pick, it looks like, is a pretty solid pick, and then a 66 overall running back. Looks like the best players in the draft is a tie between the defensive end that went number one to the Giants, a 76 overall or a 78 overall. He apparently has low morale. I would too if I got drafted the Giants. He has a hidden dev trait. And then the wide receiver that the Lions took is a 78 overall with a hidden dev trait. 91 speed. He has decent route running. Yeah, that should be a pretty solid receiver for Detroit. Checking on the progress of our franchise quarterback. At the beginning of last year, he was an 85 overall. Now he is an 88 overall. Here is our lineup going into season two. It looks like our first round pick will back up Gerald Everett. Everett played pretty good last year and he's still a star dev trait, so I'm not too upset by that. And then here is our lineup over on the defensive side of the ball. Last season, Drew Tranquil led the team in tackles, but he is still the backup to Kenneth Murray right now. So I'm going to see if I can shop him around the league. 
So looking at the Dolphins here, they have a 71 overall Nicholas Morrow at middle linebacker. Let's see if they will give us like a second round pick. They have two first, but let's see if they'll give us a second for Tranquil because I doubt they'll give us a first and they are not even going to give us a second. They will take that. So we send Tranquil to the Dolphins. We get a third round pick. And really the main reason I did that is because the CPU managed to draft that 70 overall backup middle linebacker Esparza. So we're just going to roll with him as our backup linebacker. And because we have a roster spot, I'm going to sign John Ross, who still has 96 speed, 95 acceleration, and he will most likely play our slot receiver. All right, so I actually lied. John Ross will play wide receiver three on this part, but our slot receiver, I've actually set up to be Mike Williams. But with all that out of the way, let's get season two underway. At the midway point, we are three and three. I thought it would be a little bit better than that. It looks like we have the 17th ranked offense and the ninth ranked defense. Herbert has 1,800 yards, 13 touchdowns, and five interceptions. Rushing wise, Eckler, 76 carries, 324 yards, and six touchdowns. Receiving Mike Williams has five touchdowns. Keenan Allen has one. Gerald Everett has three. And John Ross has three. Looks like K9 Kenneth Murray is leading the team in tackles with 39. What about sacks? That would be Khalil Mack with four. And interceptions, Asante Samuel and JC Jackson both have one. But now let's go ahead and wrap up season two by jumping to the end of the year and seeing if we can sneak into the playoffs again. Well, we did not perform like I thought we would. We finished eight and nine. Offensive points per game, we finished 17th. And defensive points per game, we finished 27th. On the season, Herbert throws for 4,600 yards, 36 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Rushing wise, Austin Eckler, 963 yards and nine touchdowns. Receiving Mike Williams, 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. Keenan Allen, only three touchdowns. Everett did catch nine, though. Kenneth Murray leading the team in tackles with 128. In sacks, that would be Khalil Mack with eight and a half. Interceptions, Derwin James got three. JC Jackson got two. And then Asante Samuel, Adderley, and Gilman all got one. Desmond Ritter explodes onto the scene here in season two with 5,300 yards, 39 touchdowns, and 13 picks. Leading the league in touchdown passes is Dak Prescott with 44, and in picks is Mac Jones with 24. Derrick Henry runs for almost 1,900 yards and 12 touchdowns, and Ezekiel Elliott runs in for 18 touchdowns. Michael Thomas is the only receiver to go over 100 catches, as the other two are Kyle Pitts and Travis Kelsey, who are both tight ends. But Michael Thomas, 114 catches, 1,500 yards, and 7 touchdowns. Travis Kelsey, 1,300 yards, and 17 touchdowns, which leads the league. Shaq Thompson leads the league in tackles with 142 and sacks. That goes to Jonathan Allen with 22 and a half. Interception, Donovan Wilson got five, Zach Cunningham and Miles Jack. And the season two Super Bowl will be between the Dallas Cowboys who head to their second straight Super Bowl and the seven seed Cincinnati Bengals. And the Dallas Cowboys lose their second straight Super Bowl as Cincinnati gets their first Super Bowl in franchise history. In this re-signing period, I have brought back Nazir Adderley and J.K. Scott. Everyone else here is going to walk, though, as they are just mostly depth guys, and I think we can replace them pretty easily. And then I've also franchise tagged Derwin James because he attempted to leave. So here in the first week of free agency, we don't have a ton of cap space because of guys like Keenan Allen, who you see there, have a massive contract. I may have to move on from him within the next couple years or so. He is 31 years old, still 92 overall X-Factor, still very good, but he is very expensive. But I've offered McCole Hardman, who is a 25-year-old star depth trait scheme fit receiver to come in and be our slot guy. And then Grady Jarrett, because we have currently no right ends on the roster. And I managed to land McCole Hardman and Grady Jarrett, even though I kind of lowballed Jarrett there. But I just want to show you guys this free agent class right now. At quarterback, Aaron Rodgers is still available, but two guys have been signed. Lamar Jackson is headed to Houston, and Baker Mayfield is headed to Atlanta. Seeing Lamar Jackson here, a 98 overall X-Factor, I don't know why Baltimore is letting him walk, but it's whatever, he's now signed with Houston. And we are now at the second draft here in this episode. The Texans have the number one pick, we have the 12th pick. Jumping to our pick here with pick 12, I'm looking at right end Gerald Marshall out of Oklahoma State. He has B block shedding, A tackle, what else do we know about him? A pursuit, C awareness, A play rec, and he was the strongest defensive end in the combine. We're going to go ahead and take Gerald Marshall. He has a hidden dev trait, which is what I like to see. Now we're at pick seven here in the second round. I'm looking at left tackle Andrew Peterson out of Oklahoma. He does have F run block, which really does suck, but he has B pass block, B pass block power, A impact block. So we're going to take Andrew Peterson. And then here with the 12th pick in the second round, I'm looking at center Vinny Green out of UCLA. B awareness, A pass block. 
A pass block finesse, B run block finesse, A pass block power. We're just gonna take Vinny Green, who has a hidden death trait, and we can probably move him to guard. And then here in the third round at pick four, I'm looking at Cortez Colbert out of Harvard. He has B catching, D finesse move, F hit power. He, he's definitely a project, but I think he's gonna be a solid backup outside linebacker. And now at pick seven here in the third round, I'm looking at defensive tackle Jonathan Tucker out of SMU. He does have D tackle, but he has A power move, A play rec, and I think they can improve the tackle a little bit. I also have pick eight here in the third round, and we're going to take Sebastian Maddox out of North Carolina, and he has a hidden dev trade. And then finally with pick 12 here in the third round, I'm just taking what I think is the best player available is free safety Sammy Flaxen out of Virginia Tech. A block shed, A finesse move, A hit power, B pursuit, and he is the fastest safety in the class. And also another hidden dev trade. Let's take a look at our draft class. Starting with our first round pick, Gerald Marshall, 72 overall with a hidden dev trait. Should be a pretty good defensive end for us. Andrew Peterson, not a great pick, 67 overall. Vinny Green, the center out of UCLA, 72 overall. Another hidden dev trait. I can probably move him over to guard. Then we got a 64 overall outside linebacker, a 68 overall defensive tackle. And then Sebastian Maddox is a hidden dev trait, but he is 65 overall. That could be rough to upgrade. And then Sammy Claxon, a 73 overall safety, who also has a hidden dev trait. That was kind of a steal of the draft for us. And then the CPU drafted a 69 overall right tackle, a 65 overall strong safety, a 67 outside linebacker, and a 62 corner. The best players in the draft were the defensive end that went number one overall, Quincy Hitchens, and a running back out of Oklahoma State that the Rams took at the beginning of the second round. So I've actually moved some people around here. Vinny Green was the center we drafted. I moved him to a left guard. He went from a 72 overall to a 74 overall. And I moved Maddox over here to center. He did drop some overall points, but now I at least have a backup center. Checking in with our franchise quarterback before we start season three here. He is a 90 overall, still with a superstar dev trait. And here's the starting offense as of right now. I have moved Green up to be a starter, so he gets the 500 down, so he can at least get his star dev trait. And we can hopefully start building up this offensive line. On defense, Gerald Marshall is starting at right end, so he gets his 500 downs played. And Sammy Claxton will back up Nick Adderley. And then should we lose Derwin James, I may have to move someone to another side, depending on how the ratings go. But now we will jump to midseason. We will figure out how good this team exactly is. So week eight, we are four and two. Let's see where we rank. We have the 16th ranked offense and the second ranked defense. Well, at least we have that going for us. Herbert not starting out as strong as he has in the past. 1,700 yards, 10 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Rushing wise, Eckler has 102 carries for seven touchdowns. Receiving wise, Keenan Allen has four touchdowns. Gerald Everett has three. McCole Hardman has one. Mike Williams has two. Once again, K-9 leading the team in tackles, this time with 38 tackles and sacks. It is still Khalil Mack with five. Interceptions, Adderley has two, Bryce Callahan has one, Derwin James has one, and JC Jackson has one. But with that, let's jump to the end of the season to see if we can make the playoffs. It looks like we fell apart. We were four and two and finished the season eight and nine. So this season's a little weird. We started four and oh, then we dropped two in a row. We saw here where we then lost to Denver, we then won three in a row and then lost four in a row, won another one and then lost our last two of the season. So a complete and total meltdown. Herbert with 4,900 yards, 28 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. Rushing wise, Eckler 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. Receiving Keenan Allen 77 catches for six touchdowns. McCole Hardman 72 for five touchdowns. Gerald Everett caught eight and Mike Williams caught three. Kenneth Murray leading the team in tackles with 117. Joey Bosa leading the team in sacks with 15. Interceptions goes to Nazir Adderley and Derwin James, who both got two. Patrick Mahomes throws for 5,500 yards, 44 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Baker Mayfield in Atlanta throws for 5,200 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 11 picks. So even though their quarterback threw like 5,300 yards or something last season, they still replaced him. Okay. Jonathan Taylor runs for 1,600 yards and 18 touchdowns and Ezekiel Elliott runs for 24 touchdowns. Michael Thomas yet again leading the league in receptions, this time with 111. Kyle Pitts got 107. Zaire McMichael, a rookie for Kansas City, caught 103 passes for 17 touchdowns. Jamar Chase, 102 catches, 13 touchdowns, and then DJ Moore, 100 catches for four touchdowns, and leading the league was Zaire McMichael. 
Roquan Smith leads the league in tackles with 156 and sacks. George Karloftis gets 20 and a half interceptions. Roderick Overstreet, a rookie for the Rams, gets six. Here is how the playoffs played out for the rest of the league. It looks like the Texans, because they signed Lamar Jackson, went from having the number one pick in the draft to being the number one seed, which is one hell of a turnaround. And the Kansas City Chiefs win their second Super Bowl here in this rebuild episode as they defeat the 49ers 28-3. Usually I show you guys the end of the re-signing period, but with who we have to re-sign here, I wanted to show you what it looks like before I've signed everybody because we are either going to be completely broke or this whole team is going to be in a completely new type of rebuild. All right, so let's recap exactly what happened in this re-signing period. Derwin James and JC Jackson have both decided to test free agency. I'm not going to tag Derwin James again. Austin Eckler, I'm not even going to offer a contract because that is a lot of money to give a running back. I was able to keep Justin Herbert, thankfully. Khalil Mack is really old and wants a lot of money. We're going to see if we can either lowball him in free agency or, you know, get someone younger. Sebastian Joseph Day is returning, thankfully. Wayne Brooks is someone I'm not even going to consider bringing back. Bryce Callahan is 32 years old, so we're going to let him walk. Gerald Everett, we're going to let walk for right now. I may bring him back in free agency. Kenneth Murray is re-signed. Zion Johnson is re-signed. Doug Costin is walking, and I believe there is no one else that I re-signed except for Connor McGovern. So I have shipped Keenan Allen, a number two draft pick this year, and a number two draft pick next year to the Chicago Bears for the first overall pick this year. We get to dump Keenan Allen's massive contract and hopefully get someone to replace him. So as much as this sucks, we're losing Derwin James because I've offered him a five-year $92.3 million contract and we are still behind the Chiefs and the Patriots in terms of points. All right, so I've thrown out a few offers here. Tyron Matthew, Austin Eckler, Chidobe Ouzier, Khalil Mack, Jadavion Clowney, Fletcher Cox, Jamison Williams, and Gerald Everett. I really need these defensive guys to sign because we don't have any defensive ends. Our right outside linebacker is not good. And I don't think Asante Samuel is ready to be a number one corner. Well, I managed to sign a few people. Austin Eckler is coming back on a much cheaper deal than he originally wanted. Jadavion Clowney, Fletcher Cox, Jamison Williams, and Gerald Everett. So Chidobe Awuzie got a little too expensive, so I've now offered Marcus Peters. We're still waiting on Khalil Mack to sign, and then Tyron Matthew we are slightly in a bidding war for. And Tyron Matthew has declined to sign with us. He is going to sign with the Jets. And now the Bears have entered the bidding war for Khalil Mack, and Marcus Peters is still yet to sign. And I managed to land both Khalil Mack and Marcus Peters finally. And we have the first pick in the draft and the ninth pick in the draft. I was able to trade away Keenan Allen and not give up our first round pick in order to get this one. With the first pick here, I'm looking at left tackle Brandon Gentry. That is probably not a very popular pick or at least not a very exciting pick, but he has A awareness, A lead block, A pass block finesse, B pass block power, A run block finesse, and he was the strongest person in his class at the combine. So we will take left tackle Brandon Gentry and he has a hidden dev trade. And here are the ninth pick. I'm gonna take this trade with Tampa Bay getting a one, two and a three for next season. And now here in the third round with pick nine, we do not have a second round pick. That was part of the trade to get the number one pick. I'm looking at defensive tackle Ja'Cory Jackson out of Clemson. What we know about him is he has C block shedding, C finesse move, B power, C pursuit, A stamina, and B tackle. We're going to go ahead and take him. And I am perfectly fine with that first overall pick. Brandon Gentry is a 79 overall left tackle with a hidden dev trait. We'll probably play him on the right side opposite Rashawn Slater, obviously. Ja'Cory Jackson was a 68, and then the CPU drafted a 64 overall middle linebacker, 67 overall corner, 67 overall receiver, and a 63 overall running back. And it looks like I made the smart pick because Brandon Gentry was the best player in this class. But here is the starting offense for right now. For whatever reason, the CPU has moved Slater over to right tackle. It does not matter to me as long as Gentry is getting playing time. So we know what his depth trade is. Most likely star, but we still would like to know. And then on defense, here are all the starters. It looks like the CPU has actually cut Fletcher Cox, even though I signed him in free agency. Because I guess we needed to make room for someone else. But with that, let's jump to week eight and see if this team can finally get its shit together. This season, we are five and two at week eight. Hopefully we don't fall apart like last year. Justin Herbert with 2,200 yards, 14 touchdowns to four interceptions. Rushing wise, Eckler, 93 carries and seven touchdowns. 
receiving. Mike Williams has two touchdowns. Jamison Williams has three. Gerald Everett has four. And McCole Hardman has three. Kenneth Murray leading the team in tackles with 49. Leading the team in sacks is Joey Bosa with six and a half. And interceptions, Khalil Mack has two. K9 has one. And Asante Samuel has one. It's not looking great for our team that we are the 11th offense in points per game, but the 25th in defensive points per game. That is horrible. We're letting up 27 points a game. But now let's see if we can simulate to the end of the season and not completely fall apart and manage to make the playoffs. And we finish the season 11 and 6 and make the playoffs and we will take on Pittsburgh in the first round. Here is the rest of the playoffs. It looks like Kansas City not only wins the division, they also get a bye week and the 49ers also get a bye week. Before we get into the playoffs, let's see what our regular season stats were. Justin Herbert throws for 5,400 yards nearly, 39 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. Austin Eckler, if I can pull up rushing stats. There it goes, 1,100 yards and 18 touchdowns. Receiving wide, Jamison Williams, 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. Mike Williams, 1,300 yards and 8 touchdowns. And Gerald Everett caught 9. Okay, so our offense was like on fire. Khalil Mack leads the team in tackles with 94. And in sacks, it is Joey Bosa with 13 and a half. Interceptions goes to Khalil Mack, Kenneth Murray, and Marcus Peters, who all got 2. We finished the regular season as the number one ranked offense and the number 12 ranked defense. So at least our offense is firing on all cylinders. Now that I've said that, let's see if we can manage to win a playoff game this year. I swear this team is cursed. We get bounced in the playoffs in the first round 20 to three. And this Super Bowl will be between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Carolina Panthers, which is a completely new matchup for us. I completely forgot to look at the league leaders before simulating our playoff game, but Herbert leads the league with 5,300 yards, almost 5,400. Passing touchdowns, he ties with Russell Wilson for 39 is the most, and interceptions is Tyler Campbell, an auto-generated player for Miami who threw 19. Derrick Henry runs for 1,800 yards and 16 touchdowns, but Ezekiel Elliott once again runs for the most touchdowns with 23. And I think for the first time in this rebuild, Michael Thomas does not lead the league in receptions. It goes to Brian Edwards at Atlanta who caught 107, Zaire McMichael caught 106, and Jamison Williams with 105. Leading the league in touchdowns was Juju Smith-Schuster with 14, and in yards was also Brian Edwards. Devin White leads the league in tackles with 147, and sacks goes to George Karloftis for 23 and a half, and interceptions, Buda Baker got seven. And if we're going to lose in the playoffs, at least we lose to the eventual Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers as they beat the Panthers 38 to 23. And in this re-signing period, the only person I am bringing back is Asante Samuel Jr. Everyone else will hit for agency and we will go from there. So here in our final free agency of the episode, I am looking to sign Greg Newsom II, Jadavion Clowney, and Landon Collins. And I've managed to land all three players, so we get Greg Newsom, Jadavion Clowney, and Landon Collins. The left tackle I took with the number one pick, Brandon Gentry, actually ended up being a superstar dev trade. So if you remember in the last draft, we traded our ninth pick to Tampa Bay for a first, second, and third round pick, and it looks like we get pick 16 back in return for that. And with the Buccaneers pick at 16, I'm taking defensive tackle Charleston Hilliard out of Clemson. What we know about him is B block shedding, C finesse, B power move, B stamina, A impact block, and A tackle. And we're going to take him. He is a normal depth trait, not exactly what I was hoping for. And with pick 23 here in the first round, I'm looking at tight end Dylan Hill out of North Carolina. A catch in traffic, A deep route, B injury, A medium route, B spectacular catch, and he runs a 4-5-6. I actually declined Johnny Davis's the tight end we took in the very first draft. I declined his fifth year option because he has not exactly panned out, and we'll see if Dylan Hill does. And with our next pick here in the second round, strong safety Lance Hoskins out of Texas A&M. I don't know a ton about him. I know he has B hit power, C play rec, and that he was one of the fastest safeties in his class. And then here in the third round, we pick 16, left in Austin Tarpley. We'll take him and we'll see how good he ends up being. And then because it is still showing it is a position of need, we're going to take center Chris Samuel here at the end of the third round, a normal dev trade out of Wake Forest. Let's see how we did with this draft class. First starting, Charleston Hilliard is a 77 overall, so that is a good pick for us. And then the tight end, Dylan Hill, is a 75. We missed on the next few picks, but the CPU then picked a 70 overall defensive end in the fourth round, so they kind of made up for that. So yeah, it turns out we had a pretty good pick because Hilliard is the second best player in this class, only behind Eric Ramsey, a strong safety out of Louisville. 
Heading into season five, let's take a look at our franchise cornerstone, our quarterback, Justin Herbert, 95 overall, superstar X Factor. And here's the starting offense that surrounds him. And here are all the starters on the defensive side of the ball. So I am about to kick off season five of this rebuild. And if we don't win a Super Bowl here, I am obviously considering this rebuild a failure. Not a hot start to the season as we start three and four. We are the fifth ranked offense, but the 28th ranked defense. Herbert has 2,200 yards, 16 touchdowns, and five interceptions. Rushing wise, Eckler 96 carries for 374 yards and seven touchdowns. Receiving, Jamison Williams has 39 catches for six touchdowns. McCall Hardman has six touchdowns. Mike Williams only has two, and Johnny Davis has one. Kenneth Murray is leading the team in tackles right now with 58 in sacks. It is Jadavion Clowney with three and on interceptions. K9 has one, Asante Samuel, Greg Newsom, and Lance Hoskins. But with that, let's jump to the end of the season and see if we can manage to make the playoffs. We somehow slipped into the playoffs at eight and nine. If we can go on a Super Bowl run here, that would be insane. But here is the playoff bracket. We obviously got in as the seventh seed. The Chiefs once again have the bye week and over on the NFC side, the Saints have the bye week. Before we simulate that game, let's check out all the stats. Justin Herbert, 5,100 yards, 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Austin Eckler, 865 yards on the ground and 13 touchdowns. Jameson Williams with 97 catches and nine touchdowns. McCole Hardman with 62 catches and 11 touchdowns. And Mike Williams caught eight. Kenneth Murray leads the team in tackles with 135, but rookie Sammy Claxton got 129. In sacks, that goes to Khalil Mack with eight and a half. Interceptions, Kenneth Murray got three. Asante Samuel got two. Johnny Fairley got two. Lance Hoskins got two. And then Claxton, Newsom, Nazir Adderley, and Chris Esparza all got one. Herbert is the only quarterback to go over 5,000 yards this year. Leading the league in passing touchdowns was Patrick Mahomes with 46, and with interceptions, it is Drew Locke with 18. Jonathan Taylor had one hell of a season, 2,000 yards and 28 touchdowns, both of those obviously leading the league. Alvin Kamara got close with 26 touchdowns. Leading the league in receptions is Tyler Boyd and Travis Kelsey, both with 103. In yards, it is Jamison Williams with 1,600. And in touchdowns, it goes to Zaire McMichael with 19. Leading the league in tackles is Roquan Smith with 157. In sacks, it goes to George Karloftis with 36. Are you kidding me? And then interception, Pete Warner got eight. Are you 36 sacks? What the hell kind of simulation is EA running? And after all of that, we have the fourth ranked offense in the league and the 24th ranked defense, which is probably going to be our downfall. But let's see if we can go on a miraculous seven seed Super Bowl run. And we defeat the Houston Texans 34 to 15 to move on in the playoffs. And we will now take on the Kansas City Chiefs. And here we go. We're going to simulate the divisional round of the playoffs against the Kansas City Chiefs to see if we can move on. And we take down Kansas City in overtime 23 to 17. So we sneak into the playoffs at eight and nine as the seventh seed. And now we are headed to the AFC championship. But sadly, that is where our season would end 31 to 20 against Cincinnati. Cincinnati goes on to face New Orleans in the Super Bowl. And the final Super Bowl champion of this rebuild is Jameis Winston and the New Orleans Saints. But that wraps up five seasons here in this franchise rebuild episode. Obviously, this one is a failure because I failed to win a Super Bowl. I was able to build a really good offense. We even got Herbert to a 97 overall, 99 with his boost. But I was never able to build a superstar defense to go along with him. I will eventually try the Chargers again. It may not be until Madden 23, but I will eventually try again. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time.